Hi, welcome to the Wide Open Road Arts Roving Conversation Series. Today we're talking to Carolyn Cardenet. Carolyn creates site-specific installations and sculptural assemblages using video, sound, painting and found objects. Frequently incorporating discarded plastics into her work, she compiles ephemeral pieces that position the viewer somewhere between aesthetic pleasure and cultural horror in the face of overt consumption. Um, tell me about your practice. What drives it materially and conceptually? So is it okay that I read it? Yeah, 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 yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, all good. We're good. My practice is obviously driven by the need to make art in response to what is happening around me and what I care about. Plastic pollution is what matters to me and the concept that my children and grandchildren will swim in a vast ocean of plastic frightens me and this is what prompts me to be so passionate in this field. So what do you think are some of the important roles of the modern artist? Um, to respond to the environment uh, around him, what, what is happening in the world. Um, it's lovely to paint flowers but you know, if you can express a bit more than that in your work, I think it is it is important to show what people cannot see, um, yeah. the, the, the normal being, or what they yeah. call normal being, I don't think they're normal, I think we're normal, <laughs> cannot, cannot see and um, and there's a wealth to, of things to present to the world and once you start then people um, understand it and, and see it and, and respond to it. So do you think, because um, the next question was um, do you think that artists have social responsibility? So, based on what you were just saying, would you say that the responsibility is to show people the things that they're not seeing? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's, that's our job, um, to show through the world what is happening around the world. Things that, are, that most of the time are missed by the single individual, and until humans are confronted by it, uh, they do not understand the magnitude of the problem, as numbers do not mean a thing to men, like a, if it's yeah. a scientific, uh, you know, um, experiment and they, they worked out that you know, 51 trillion micro um, 51 trillion pieces of microplastic in the ocean mm. um, that doesn't mean anything and that means a lot yeah yeah it does yes it? yes yeah. as a, when you show it so um i think numbers are very over overwhelming for people yeah and for, for all of us and once you see it on a small scale that's when it starts to mean something yeah so do you think for you um, is um, connecting with other artists or having some kind of a um, art making community, is that yes. important for you? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think an artist community and here I'm loving the artist community around here yeah. because it's quite uh, prolific and people are quite uh, close by as in Melbourne you're probably more spread it and um, yes. people have time to come to events yeah they communicate mm. and it's amazing the contact I had with people around here yeah. um, is it taking the time and talking about their practice and sharing ideas and um, you know I had a few people coming say oh I'm picking up everything as well and you know yeah and, and how can I uh, how can I do more about it? So I think it is uh, important to have artist community, not only of artists, um, because I think artists are bringing the fun into uh, into a community. As well. the fun, yes. <laughs> as well, you know, when you got some fun events, it's yeah. you're an artist. Um, it's not the other people that do that. So I think it's it's a good thing. Yeah, good thing, definitely. Okay, and so so can you how does that? Um, the artist community, how does that inform your practice? Does that affect the way that you make work? Like, do you think the community that you're in will affect the work that you make? Um, I probably will. Yeah, because you you, you talk with, with the other artists and you know they make you see things differently or things that you haven't thought of. And, um, it always um, has a, an influence, a smaller or greater. Yeah, yeah. Like in artist residencies, you know, just talking with people doing different different works, but um, different kind of craft, but it, it does. Yeah. It does yeah. 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 Okay. Um. So, what what are your philosophies when it comes to making art? Presumably, it's connected to your environmental yeah. matter. Yeah. Well. Um, I was. Uh, I think I was taking a different slant when I answered this. Okay. And yes. I was saying that after many years, I have come to the conclusion that at this stage of my practice, yeah, that art doesn't have to be complicated. Yeah. 
um, and it can be anything that you choose or intend it to be and last it has to have a message to reach people okay so that's my philosophy now it's not specifically um, oh, I don't know if it's well, it what did you mean in philosophies what well I meant um, like is the you know a particular thing that drives your work as in you know a reason for yeah. how you think work should be made or yeah. why it should be made or yeah yeah. yeah yeah and I think that's what I collect the things and I can put them because they're not precious things mm. I am very uh, comfortable uh, putting them together very simply yeah like, uh, using bricolage or, or crafts yeah um, and you know it doesn't have to be uh, expensive painting sure what can this and yeah. it, um, and I think in a way it reaches people a bit more because it's yeah it is just simple and it's there. Well, it's more accessible and too. Honest, honest, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. yeah, yeah, accessible is a good word. So you said that now at this stage in your career you feel mm. that. So did your career, well, did your work used to be more um, complicated or yes. inaccessible? Yeah, think? definitely. Mm. And um, probably at a point I said I must have tried to please the crowd. You know, as, yeah, as right. we all do in, yeah. in our at a point and stage and. Um, realizing that you know being honest with yourself and um, everything starts back to the beginning yeah, it's very humbling being an artist isn't it it's just um, every new adventure is, is hardly a step up it's you still go back to do, do the same thing in a simple manner um, it's still work it's still labor um, and it's beautiful and, uh, and I love it for that but it's just um, yeah, I think it doesn't have to be complicated. Mm. I think you're right. I think at the start of a body of work, it, you do always go back to the, the beginning, which is kind of like yourself, isn't it? Yes. You go back to yourself and then start from there again. Yeah. Um, so where where do you go or what do you do for inspiration? <laughs> um, now it's, it's actually pretty easy, I suppose you're such on a roll and doing it all the time. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not like before you had to, you know, between the children, feeding your children or whatever. Now yeah. it's like, um, just stop and think. I think that that's the hardest thing. But so it, that's a really important point though, isn't it? Stop. Stop. Because that's what, <laughs> that's what we that's have to do. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and uh, so for me, for example, in Melbourne, because, um, I take the tram now to work because that that's when I have three quarters of an hour mm. of freedom and, and uh, there's no phone, no, well I can take my phone out but I don't yeah. uh, and it's the time I have my visual diary yeah. and I write um, ideas or, or, or have, you know, thinking of applying somewhere and what could I do for this and, yeah. and then it comes very quickly then, mm. which, is a, which is a good thing. Um, the other thing is night time is always a good one, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah night time that... Um, things pop up. I mean last night I was thinking of I have to make a chair for, for work and I was thinking I need a specific kind of chair, chair that I can read through blah 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 blah. This morning I go to the local market and here is my chair ah, that, I, wow. <laughs> that I found. So it's certainly um, yeah just just time. Just yeah. time by yourself. To think. You don't need long, you just need to be on it. Okay. Yeah. So your your inspiration comes from inside, not it's not external thing, it's an internal thing. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, I think both. Both. I might have seen something. You know, inspiration is also well. Uh, um, later on, but going someplace else, like here I am in New State, mm -hmm. and I get a lot of inspiration talking to people, mm -hmm. thing, picking up things. Um, it, the, the work is not made in my mind yet, but I'm sure that we will come together um, yeah. and create a work. So, yeah, um, yeah I think that's sort of uh, inspiration. Ladies, have you finished? Yeah. <laughs> I want this out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll <laughs> <laughs> have another round. <laughs> Um, so, in the current political climate, support for the arts is low. Yes. How do you manage to get by as an artist or incorporate art making into your life? Mm -hmm. So, like many artists, I taught, I, uh, I teach art. I've taught art before. Yeah. Uh, luckily, I have found my niche now because I run art and sustainability workshops, which uh, brings it to my two passions together of art and um, sustainability. Yeah, and creating awareness. And I also decided to become a social worker after a residency in the city of Yarra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So 
I um I, I just fell into it, you know. I was just helping out. I do that two, three times a, a week at night after school. So, that's, so your decision to become a social worker was fed by your experience as an artist, basically. Yes, yes, in in an artist residency, right. working happened? with children, just working with children, and and um, usually they're kids from the House and Commission in Brunswick, yeah. this road. And um, yeah, I just found that what the city did for them was great, and and the team is young, which keeps me younger as well. <laughs> and um, it's a lovely thing to do, and I really enjoy it. Yeah. So is that therapy or no? No, no, no. I just I'm just there <laughs> helping out. So there's different okay. workshops. Yeah. And so there could be a, a sound, there could be a, an art, there could be a fashion. Yeah. So we help the kids. Fashion, yeah. So the other one can paint. Yeah, all kinds of things for Fiji. Yeah, yeah. And does that? Do you think that in itself feeds back into your practice? Yeah, it does. It does. And just, I think. Yeah, being older and having more grown-up kids to yeah. have more time to <laughs> think and, and do what you ever Thank want Thank you so to much. You're yeah, more than welcome. Really welcome. loved it. Oh, and, uh, good. We'll keep an eye on you on the internet. <laughs> yes, and since other people, I'll be here again next week. So Saturday, next week's Sunday. the last week, is it? And then Saturday the following week, and that's it. All right. Okay. Yeah. And I sent you an email, so hopefully that's all great. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> so lovely. <laughs> See you. Bye. Bye. Um, no, that's all right. Um, no worries about the workshop, the yeah, the our youth services. And I was just asking if that fed back into your work. That's it. Good. Yes, it did. <laughs> okay, we're done. Okay. Um, so the next one, this is a question that um, mm -hmm. some people have drawn me up on, but um, yes. what do you consider to be good art? Something that moves you. Yeah. 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 Something that moves you, and it could be good or bad. Yes. But. <laughs> that moves you and um, I was talking to Horse who is an artist around here who's in his horse and and he was saying something about art which is beautiful I'm trying to remember and he says art is for humanity and it will stay hmm. yeah it will stay you'll, you'll die but it, it will stay through and it was for humanity and that's one of the purpose of art that's so what's the purpose of art? That it, it will it will stay through the times and and being shown through it to different generations. Mm. Sorry, that's a bit different from your question, no, no, but it is. Um, yeah, I thought that was beautiful. That is that, beautiful. Yeah, and he said he was commissioned to do some work, um, and he, it was such an honor because that family kept on commissioning things for the last five generations. So the house was full of objects or, or um, art that yeah. have been commissioned mm. and it would be passed on to next generation. Oh, that right. is so special, isn't it? Yeah, it yeah. is. And you go, oh, okay, that's, yeah, that's part of our job, you know, mm. like, that painting might be passed on to my daughter's uh, children and things like that. So it is... So to get good. back to the idea of good art, is that, <laughs> that's okay, but is that, is that longevity an important part of good art, do you think? Uh, actually not, not no, for me. No. It just needs to move you. It needs yeah. to move you and uh, and you know one of the piece of art I had people tell tell me like maybe some have said to you that it, um, they're speechless or um brought tears mm. or and you go you know, they might have had exactly the same um reaction. Oh the same, they might have gotten the same message as what you, you did because you do it for yourself. Sure, yeah. Um, you create the, the work for yourself um, to please yourself as, as, a, as a shape, I suppose, as a form. Mm. Um, but then when somebody else tells you that, that's pretty special. Yeah, what I love about that is the idea of the engagement with the art becoming um, an embodied thing, like yes. what you said about crying or. Crying. Yes. Not or not be able to speak. I love that. Yes, that yes. Physically. Yeah, there's a beautiful book uh, by I think it's James Elkins. He's a writer, and and one of his books is about art and crime. Oh, really? And it's it's beautiful, and it's uh, testaments of people who have he kind of um, you know, emailed a lot of people and yes. said, "Have you ever felt that way in front of a piece?" And wow. and people are responding and say, "Yes, actually, I have." And, and I had read that book and forgotten about it. And I went to Venice to the uh, Piazza San Marco, to the Basilica. Um, and it's all, um, it's kind of rounded domes. And everything inside is um, uh, 
uh, little gold mosaics everywhere. And mm -hmm. it was just so overwhelming. I was talking to a horse before and I said, I think what, when I decided to cry or when that happened, it was because I thought hundreds of craft people would have made those little tiny yes. tiles yeah. and would have you know, colored the whole interior of that huge basilica. And I think, oh, wow. Yes, that's a work for humanity. Yeah. That stayed and that, um, and that touches people. Yeah, so that's a work for humanity in that it touches them. Because the other way that I would, was thinking about a work as a work for humanity is yeah. like a political thing whereby it changes something, yeah. um, which is different to that yeah. being touched, but different, yeah, also. But that's what more I do with, yes. yeah, with the uh, creating awareness yeah. you know, in plastic. Yeah, in Although plastic I would well. suggest that what you do is kind of, you know, can be both, because sometimes it's very, very beautiful. Mm. I love I love the piece that you showed at uh, the mill with yeah. us, the river, rivers. Yes, so beautiful. The yeah. plastic border with, yeah. which is not as nice here, I have to say. So ah. it's much nicer. Well, the mill. I loved. Um, I saw a photograph you had of it somewhere, um, mm -hmm. and you had the lights and the yes. light. Yes, it was. Yes, really that was nice. Yeah, that it was uh, lucky. <laughs> yeah, lucky <laughs> hanging. Um, so my last question was, what is your dream art collaboration? Well, the other one. Oh, did I? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Thank yeah. you. Sorry. Right. Um, how does good art make you feel? Um, something that uh, pulls my heartstrings. Okay. Yeah. Something that um, so make me cry is one, but I yeah. often cry. So it's um, yeah, something that will touch and make you stay, make you mm. stay and look at it and look at it, look at a piece of work. Uh, because so many times going to the museum, we go, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's true. <laughs> but when you stop, and even you come back, yes. and then you know that's definitely it's something. Um, and I can't tell you what it is because it depends no. on the artist, and it, it it's, it's not a particular type of work. Yeah, it is something. Mm. And I can't explain. It. Can you? No, <laughs> I'm just thinking about it. But I mean, what I find interesting is that that's what everyone I've spoken to, everyone looks that yeah. yeah, something that makes you feel something, which yeah. which I would say too, which is just very interesting. Yeah, yeah that's, the only thing I can find that the closest is uh, being a mum, and you sometimes you child fall or something, and you just, you know, <laughs> you got that heart string going Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it's a bit like that, um, but it's on a, a different level. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually love that we can't, describe it because I think that's what I think if we could describe it it wouldn't exist or wouldn't be working yeah, yeah, yeah it has yeah. to be that way yeah. well that's what we, we paint or do art because we can't always describe it with words mm. uh, or there's no words to that in between is between the word and the work um, we can't describe that that's right yeah mm. that gap I love that mm. <laughs> yeah. okay so the dream collaboration if uh, oh, yes. history geography <laughs> and money were no barrier yes um, Okay, so I've been going on artist residencies for a little bit now, mm. four or five years, a bit more, and oh. I'm loving this. I'm actually at the stage again, at the stage of my life, it's perfect because yes. I've grown up, you know, it's perfect, you've got more freedom. Mm. And um, I did an artist residency in Sydney with the um, with scientists, and that was quite amazing. That was a revelation, mm. and I thought that if I could to answer your question, mm -hmm. working with scientists regarding the plastic pollution anywhere in the world would actually um, you know, be great um, to, to, to do and uh, start this process this year. Um, I said I was a recipient with them and I'm um, actually yeah, trying to do a proposal with uh, nothing in Tasmania, which is um, welcome to the Anthropocene, which would be working with scientists again to represent what they're trying to research or, or say. So you would like to be making making work work that's a representation of the data kind of thing? Really. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's right. right. My own interpretation, I suppose. Yeah. Know, it doesn't have to be exactly um, but the idea. Yes. The idea of what they're researching. Yeah, yes, yeah, that sounds great. So you can, you can do that, can't you? Yeah, I mean, yeah, go anywhere in the world. You can do your dream collaboration. Just yes, yes, yeah. Also. Yeah, that's great. That's so often people are like, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's just totally impossible. That's great. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm looking at more and more into this. Um, and making bigger and bigger projects. Yeah. And um, data's often, I, I'm very drawn to data. Mm -hmm. I think it can be so beautiful. Because I love the graphs. And, yes. And sometimes like the colors they use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It's, um, 
yeah, it's it, well, it's a graphic, it's a graphic uh, thing, and I do I, I study graphic art as well, so that black and white ah, thing, it's you. like really, I don't know, it's powerful. Yeah, okay. it's not words, it's uh, this powerful drawing quality to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, well, that's the end of my questions. So thank, <laughs> thank you, you so much for talking to me. <laughs> thank you.